Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this Holy Trinity Sunday. It's the only Sunday out of the church calendar that is dedicated to a doctrine rather than really about the gospel. But you know me, a little bit of renegade. We're going to go the gospel way more than doctrine today. Um, there's one title that I never want to have in my career. And that would be technology pastor. Um, for whatever reason this morning, our, our projector and our computer are not matching up at all. Last week, or the last three weeks, it's been our sound for those who are watching us on uh, Facebook and on uh, uh, Zoom as well. So <laughs> we're making do this week. If you do not have word sheets. I have four here, and if people can share and do all that, just raise your hand if you want one, and I will get it to you. Also not the graceful pastor. We will not put that on there. There we go. I just got a couple of them. Dean, there, Dean's got a couple back there, too, that he's bringing up, and we'll just kind of get them around as best we can. Um, you know, you know the old trick? Oh, thank you, dear. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know the old trick for uh, choir members when you're doing the song without words and you don't remember what the words are, then you just say watermelon, right, Dick? You just go watermelon, so you just do that along with it. Thank you, everyone, for grabbing the extras, and <laughs> we'll, we'll make it happen. It is also, as you know, Memorial Day weekend, and... Memorial Day weekend is always kind of an odd one because sometimes we tend to drift into the direction of honoring and thanking all veterans, which we should do. But this weekend is really specific. This is about remembering those who died while in service. I think that's our tendency as human beings that we don't want to stay in a state of mourning or sadness and so we try to go over here and find something that's happier and easier for us to take. And we always try to figure out how does that fit into a worship service? And I'm really appreciative this year of a friend of mine who is a former army chaplain and who struggles and wrestles with how do we do this as well. And I'm grateful for him for writing an opening prayer for this day. Um, coming from an army chaplain, it means a lot to me and what he's thinking about as well. So let us begin our worship this day with prayer. Almighty God, you are our strength and our shield. We give you thanks for the men and women of our armed forces, past and present, especially for those who have died while serving. May their sacrifices serve the cause of peace. And may our nation be ever grateful for their service. With your wisdom and strength, guide our military leaders and all of our leaders and give to all people a desire for justice and peace. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, 
who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We continue our worship with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Our gathering song for today is God Loved the World. death into life and defeat into victory. Increase our faith and trust in him that we may triumph over all evil in the strength of the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe, ascribe to the Lord the glory to God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. 
The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like the young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord all are crying, Glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned, asking forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. The Holy Gospel for today is from John, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these things that you would do that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. One of my favorite commentators uh, each week that I read is Dr. David Lose. I've spoken of him before. Uh, he was a professor at Luther Seminary, is now the senior pastor at Central Lutheran in Minneapolis, which is just an enormous church, <laughs> absolutely enormous. And I always turn to him because he seems to have this more down-to-earth kind of commentary on the scripture. And he's someone that I hold in very high regard. And, and this is what he said about this text this week. I find it slightly ironic that this Sunday focuses on, in my humble opinion, one of the worst possible themes for a sermon, the Trinity, and yet features some of the more interesting stories from the New Testament. As for the theme... Trinity Sunday is the only Sunday oriented to church doctrine, and I've always found the prospect of offering a sermon on the Trinity not just daunting, but downright dicey, which surprises me a bit, because I'm a huge proponent of using our sermons to teach our folks about our shared faith, but the Trinity? Goodness. 
Who really understands it? Thank you, Dr. Lois. <laughs> this is, it's, honestly, that's what I've always felt about the Holy Trinity, is this is probably the hardest concept in the church, not just to preach, but to understand. And if Dr. Lois and me aren't good enough, how about the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther? To deny the Trinity endangers your salvation. To try to comprehend the Trinity endangers your sanity. <laughs> I'm in really good company if I can count Luther amongst this. Well, the story that we have before us today is a really good one. This is really a great story. I mean, imagine for a moment this, this religious leader, this scholar, who comes by night. He doesn't come, you know, so that people can see him. I mean, if he wanted to do that, he could have stood out there and yelled at Jesus and called him all sorts of names and drawn attention to himself and get the accolades of his colleagues and others that you're doing the right thing. You're shouting down this guy. He's a heretic. And just keep going with that. He didn't come at night to gather information on Jesus. He came to understand. He came to listen. He came to find out what Jesus was talking about. I've always liked Nicodemus. I like his questions. They're probing questions. And there's a, a tenacity in him about trying to find the truth, or if not the truth, at least an understanding of what Jesus was talking about. Now, when thinking about the Trinity, I kind of think of it this way. We get God. God is the creator. God is the source of all things that are living. So we'll put that part of the Trinity over here. We pretty much get Jesus. You know, love one another. Be nice to one another. Serve one another. We, we, we pretty much get Jesus, the basic concept. So we'll put Jesus over here too. But the Holy Spirit? Wow, that's a whole other thing altogether. I mean... It gives me some trouble. I, I have questions about the nature of the Holy Spirit that I find unsettling to myself. I mean, God is God, and that, that part I get. But isn't there a, a more simple way of thinking about the Holy Spirit than what we've been given in our teachings and what we've heard in confirmation and what we've heard in sermons? It troubled Nicodemus this concept of the Holy Spirit. And it troubles me a bit too. Being born again and flesh is flesh and spirit is spirit and something about the wind thrown in there too. All this caused me to do some, really some soul searching this week and trying to figure out, well, what is it that I really believe? So let me tell you a little story. My first full-time call to ministry was at Lutheran Campus Ministry at Arizona State University in Tempe, Arizona. In some of the cold days we had this week, Tempe, Arizona sounded really nice to me, but that would be getting off track here. Um, it was an interesting setup. Lutheran Campus Ministry owned its own building on the property that was owned by University Lutheran Church. And in that building was the offices, the fellowship hall, the kitchen, and a, a couple of classrooms. In the other building was where the sanctuary was and all of that. It was an interesting sanctuary, when, especially when we first arrived. It had been there for 50-some years and still had the bare concrete floor. Not just the bare concrete floor, but metal folding chairs that were vintage 1950s as well. Not the luxury padded ones like we have. Oh no, these were the wood bottoms, metal backs. And it was an interesting place. Up until the senior pastor had arrived there, um, <laughs> they even stored the lawnmower in the sanctuary because they had no place to store it. So there it sat in the back of the church next to this beautiful little organ 
that was a single rank, so one keyboard, but it was the most beautiful instrument and filled that space with beautiful music as well. A very friendly bunch of people. They came from everywhere around the United States and settled there at this little church. Well, one of the first Sundays that we were there, you know, Lori and I were wrestling with our little ones. They were very little when we first arrived. And the organist started playing the introduction to the opening hymn. And I noticed something. It was like a, a humming. It wasn't coming from the organ. And it wasn't coming from the microphones or anything like that. It was real humming. People were humming along as the organist played through a verse of the hymn. It's the kind of thing that startles you a bit. You kind of looked around and everybody seemed to be humming. And so, you know, being a good Lutheran and loving my bulletin, the first thing I did was look at the bulletin. Let's see, congregation hums. No, it didn't say that in the bulletin or anything. And they were humming. I was bemused by the humming. I thought it was kind of interesting. I've never experienced it before. I haven't since either. Anywhere that I've visited, anywhere that I've preached, never heard that kind of humming. So I thought, well, i got to ask some questions here. I want to find out what this humming is all about. And so I asked a lot of people, you know, Tell me about the humming. And the answer was, what humming? Well, you know, first thing I thought of was, all right, they're messing with me. They planned this out just to drive the new guy crazy a little bit here. But no, they honestly didn't realize that they were all humming along with the hymn. It still brings a smile to my face because it was just so unique, so weird, but so wonderful as well. In a strange way, at least for right now, that is how I understand the Holy Spirit to be. Let me explain. There was a presence in that humming. There was a unity in it. One that no one said, all right, let's now all be unified together and let's hum. No, it just grew. And it was something natural. And it's something that went from person to person and bound us together in this very strange sort of way. It, it, it's kind of how I think of the Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit is that hum in our lives as followers of Jesus. It's there. Sometimes we don't always hear it. But it's always there, accompanying us on our journey in Christ. It's a connector. The hum is somewhat of a connector between you and me, the Holy Spirit and God. <laughs> Dr. Lois also wrote, I don't understand the Holy Trinity. We don't have to understand the Trinity, and honestly, I have a hard time trusting those who say they do to be part of the church, created, redeemed, and sustained by the triune God. We don't have to believe all of it or understand it to be part of it. To say that we've got it all figured out can also mean that we've stopped asking questions, that we've stopped digging deeper into our faith and our relationship with any part of the Trinity. Just like Nicodemus. And here's something else about Nicodemus. Nicodemus isn't a one and done in John's Gospel. Nicodemus shows up seven times in this gospel. And each time he shows up in succession, there's little evidences that his faith has grown. 
that this man who is a leader of the community, as it says, a man who is a Pharisee, he's one of the elite in the faith, is slowly starting to come a different direction and come closer and closer to Jesus. He's evolving in his faith. He's reforming, reforming himself and his faith in many ways. In his final appearance, Nicodemus, along with Joseph of Arimathea, collect the body of the crucified Jesus from the cross. These two really important pillars of the community risked a lot to show up there. And no one else would dare go. But these two went, collected the body, laid it in a tomb, anointed it, and rolled the stone in front of it. Those final words from Jesus to Nicodemus became a key to his faith in this episode. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. In a few moments, we're going to recite together the Apostles' Creed. And I pray that they become more than just words for us. Not just something that we just rapidly skip through and, oh, there's another part of the service done. But to really think about what we're saying. May we see and feel and experience the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, in, in a whole new way. May we hear the Spirit speaking to us and the Spirit speaking through us. And may we all participate fully in the hum, in the hum of feeling and hearing and experiencing the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives and in the lives of those around us. Amen. Let us confess our faith together in the words of the Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. God of wholeness, we pray for believers all over the globe, unify us in service of the gospel, that we may work together as beloved siblings to share your love with all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the cosmos, we pray for creation, the gardens, the waterways, and creatures near to us, and diverse forms of life that remain unseen. Teach us to treat the natural world with reverence, seeking restoration when human divisions have caused harm to your beloved creations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all people, we pray for harmony among the nations. 
cast out from us unclean spirits of greed and fear, that we may work in solidarity with one another for the common good. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. God of abundance, we pray for those who are oppressed or in any need. Encourage those who have begun to lose heart. Today we pray for Judy, Diana, Chase, Kelly, Barb, Julie, Chris, Harry, Craig, Don, Joan, and those we name in our hearts before you. Strengthen and renew us with your spirit, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God of righteousness, we pray for this holy house of worship. Set our gaze upon things eternal, that in thanksgiving for your mercy, we may extend grace to more and more people. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God of the ages. In your goodness, you have sent us faithful witnesses for every time and place. We give you thanks for those saints who now rest in your eternal mercy. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayers. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also, also with you. you. Let us share signs of peace with each other. Share, share. <clears throat> Jesus, bread of life. You have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us be what we receive here, your body for life of the world. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Lord God, there is none beside you. You are perfect in power, in love, and in purity. You invite us to join you at your heavenly banquet that knows no end. In this meal, we recall the sacrifice of your Son and the sanctification of your Spirit. Send that spirit upon us now, that we may be ready to be your companions. And on these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, who at supper with his disciples took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper he took a cup of wine, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Trying God in the dance of your love, we see your nature as utter relationship. Be close to all who struggle in relationships at home, in the workplace, in our church, across social divides and national thresholds. As your three persons gaze in shared attention, look upon those whose lives go unrecognized. As your three members work together in true partnership, uphold any who face the struggles of their life alone. As your partners in threefold unity relish on one another in deep delight, revitalize those who live without joy or hope. Make your church a community across time and space that enjoys the gift of your life and imitates the wonder of your love 
until all come into your presence and gaze upon your glory. God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Amen. The disciple came to Jesus and said, Lord, teach us to pray. And he taught them saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us join in this feast together. This is the body of Christ given for me. The blood of Christ shed for me. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Our sending song is Baptized in Water. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.